a demonstration of my Uno recognition computer vision software. It is also available on GitHub. And on GitHub, it comes with a random forest classifier that has been optimized and trained already, and it has been saved with the pickle library, as well as a dataset. The dataset has the format of an Excel file delimited by a comma with all the different information and features from all the different cards and sets that have been used in order to train the classifier. It also comes with three main files in order to run the code. They are all for Jupyter Notebook, and the main file is the one that's called Computer Vision Main, which has an end face and can pretty much do anything from creating a data set, adding onto a data set from a different set of images from a different folder, creating a classifier, identifying an Uno card in an image, identifying an Uno card in a folder, or identifying Uno cards live from the camera. It also comes with three different sets of images with different levels of brightness and noise and resolution done with three different phone cameras in order to better train the model. If we go here and we just run our code in order to run it, to run all of the different three files, main, camera, and PyTesseract, just restart and run all into the Jupyter Notebook. This will start the interface, which is right here. And it can create, as I said, a data set. If I'm trying to create a data set right now because I'm already having one, it will tell me that a data set already exists. Before that, I can choose the folder. So I want to create a data set on Uno images set one, which looks like this. And if I do that, it will tell me that a file already exists. If I press OK, that I want to modify it, it will ask me whether or not I want to add to the data set or replace the data set entirely. I'm just going to cancel it so the operation has been cancelled. Same thing applies to the random forest classifier. The file already exists. Press OK to replace the data set. We don't want that. It has been already trained and optimized. The optimization process happens through a random search and a grid search specialized onto the parameters from the random search in order to have the best accuracy possible on the data set. If the user trains to train the classifier without having a data set in the folder, it will give up an error saying that a data set is required and at the moment is not available. By going into the identify Uno card button, there's a new window that comes up. This new window has all the different buttons that we need in order to identify the card through two different color methods, one using OpenCV range mask and the other one using the web colors library. And this can apply to one single image or to a folder. So if I choose one image, let's say I want a blue four, it's going to tell me it's a blue four as the result of the machine learning model. And it will also show me the, all these images, the input image, all the different lines, the um, children, so the holes, there are no circles, all the different corners with a Harris method, all the different corners with the Shitomasi method, the actual contour of the shape and the can image for it. You can do the same thing using the web classifier. Let's put a green zero. So I'll make a green zero and the exact same thing applies here as well. If I go with a folder, I can go onto the desktop and I have a folder right here which looks like this with some random images. It will look through all of them, put a text onto the image with what the image is, and then it will check the name of the image with the result of the machine learning model in order to understand the accuracy and whether or not it was accurate. So if I do that, it will go through all of them every 500 milliseconds. And then at the end, it will give me a message telling me that the accuracy was 100% in this case. Same thing applies to the web color. If I go to the camera, pretty much turns on the camera. And with the camera, it is able to identify cards live. So I have a green skip here. So if I show it there, and I have a green skip. You see there's a little window on the right. That window on the right helps the, the, the user in order to know how far away they need to be, the cards need to be, from the camera. In this case, you do not want to have 
the ellipse of the Uno card shown in this window here. So on the canny, this is a red one as well. So it's a red skip. Now it is able to identify both vertically and horizontally. So let's try to go a bit closer so we don't have to circle anymore around it. There we go, red skip. Then we also have a five here, a red five. That's a red five. We also have a yellow one here. So that's a yellow one. We also have a blue four. So that's a blue four. We also have a yellow five. So let's get it accurate, yellow five. We also have a reverse blue. So let's just try to get it. Well, blue reverse. And then also a green seven. So let's try to get it accurate again by using the image and right as guide. There we go, green seven. And as I said, it can be also done like that. Green seven. So that was the demonstration for the camera. If the user presses Q, the live stream stops and the user can go back to the identification menu. And by pressing return, they can go back to the main menu from where they can exit. Now, there are two other files which are quite important. The camera file, what it does is if the user presses restart and all, it will pretty much do the exact same process as the one in the main, but without needing the entire code, without having an interface, without having anything else. It's just the camera detection software combined with the trained classifier, which is this one. So technically, by just having these two files, anyone can identify any UNO cards. Furthermore, there is another method of identifying the cards. This method that does not have an interface and it does not use machine learning. It uses an OCR engine called PyTesseract. And if I restart and run all, I'm doing it on a red five. So I have it identified as a red five. The frame around the image also changes to the color. And then here I have some of the different images that has been, have been processed. I can also change it to, let's say, a eight. So let's run it again. And I have a blue eight. Now it is important to note that this method is not as accurate as the machine learning model. And it can prove quite difficult to recognize images that are flipped. So if I go to uh, an image that has been flipped, like this one, like this one here, the green, it will say it is a green four because it is flipped around and it's, it has some difficulties there. Now, it has from a full set of Uno cards. Uh, this is not, this is only, this method is only able to identify cards that have digits in them. So this can only identify anything from zero to nine. It will not identify any special card or any black cards. And it has about 80 to 90% accuracy. And it can be 100% accuracy if all the cards are either horizontally or vertically but without them being flipped. That's all pretty much for the entire demonstration.